We started hearing more and more about what the AIDS crisis was doing in Africa. News started trickling in that, you know, this had turned into a full-blown crisis, and I think, I, I can't remember the numbers, but it was a staggering number of people were dying of AIDS in Africa, and it was uh, creating, like, millions of orphans. There was concern among the community that I was a part of, both artists and fellow Christians, but there wasn't a basis for action. A few of us that were involved in the uh, music community here in Nashville got together to see if maybe we could help on our end by mobilizing people that we knew in the Nashville music community, particularly uh, fellow Christians. We had heard some statistics early on that uh, just a tiny percentage of the uh, American Christian population had any real concern about this. The group of us that were meeting on this felt like it wasn't because they didn't care, it's because they didn't understand, didn't know. And so we felt like our job was, as much as anything, to uh, educate them. And if they got uh, the information, that they would respond in a way that we think Jesus would. Bono had actually recorded a, a short PSA and uh, was wondering if we could play it at some of these big Christian music festivals where, uh, I don't know, like 20, 30,000 people would gather. It was a remarkable thing to see happen. And what was really remarkable is how fast it went. Uh, I think of movements as needing, you know, decades to get going. And uh, this really happened in a, in a quite short amount of time. I give a lot of credit to Bono in particular. Uh, he felt like uh, America was like a sleeping giant and if you could wake them up, uh, we would do the right thing. But he felt the way to get to uh, the heartland was through soccer moms and church people. And so uh, we were able to help with the church people and a lot of soccer moms are fellow Christians as well, so we were able to help there a little bit as well. And it happened pretty quickly, like it seems like it all started turning around in, in a matter of six months to a year. The thing that we found working with fellow Christian artists was there was an enthusiasm as they started seeing pretty immediate results from what they were doing. So many things like that, you're, you're playing the long game. and. And you know, that's probably how it should be. But in this case, they saw a movement happening that was actually moving really quickly and started gathering momentum. And so I think for a lot of them, they felt like they were not only doing something worthwhile and doing something that was consistent with their calling as followers of Jesus, but I think they saw it as like, like a, an emergency and uh, an opportunity to save lives uh, almost immediately and that's exactly what it did. One of the most important things for the public to know is that we've come so far and uh, that PEPFAR and the Global Fund have been proven to work. I think one of the biggest challenges we had when we were first starting out is that uh, the average American had a pretty low opinion of what foreign aid did. You know, there was talk about it just kind of being money being flushed down a hole. So when we look back at uh, the last two decades of PEPFAR and the Global Fund, we see uh, that it saved 27 million lives. And uh, that is not anything to be taken lightly, and it's certainly something that we want to keep continuing. And I believe that most Americans now believe that uh, appropriate uh, foreign aid used wisely is you know, not only the right thing to do, but it's in America's best interest.